Hello YouTube, welcome to Coding with Dom. I'm Dom, this is me coding. <laughs> this is my first video on YouTube with coding tutorials and stuff, so if you enjoy what you see, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, ring the bell, do whatever you have to do to show some love, leave a comment, leave feedback, do all that stuff. Um, today, we will be looking at Nightwatch, how to write end-to-end -end tests with Nightwatch, how to get up and running, uh, this will be the first video in a series of videos that I hope to do around this topic of end-to-end -to -end testing with Nightwatch, how to write tests, how to get up and running, how to put this stuff in CI. Um, I'm not going to go through the benefits and why you should be doing testing. I'm going to give for granted that if you're here, you already know why testing is, good, is a good thing. Um, if you don't, if you don't know, even know what we're talking about, I would suggest you to go on Google, just write end-to-end -end testing, benefits of testing, this kind of stuff. You'll find all sorts of resources by people that will know how to explain it much better than I can. Um, today, we'll just be looking at how to set this stuff up, how to get up and running. And uh, yeah, I'm going to, this is a disclaimer. I have not studied for this. I have not prepared in any way. I'm just going to wing it and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> um, I will switch between Nightwatch API page and documentation and code editor. Um, I'm going to go mo mostly by memory, and my memory may fail me because I am a developer after all. But we'll see how it goes. We'll try things out and we'll see how it goes together. So first things first, I've created an empty folder, intro Nightwatch. I'm going to be testing the Hacker News website just because it has a simple layout, simple stuff. Uh, there's nothing fancy that I want to do, so we're just going to be testing the Hacker News website. And what I have here is an empty folder. And the first thing I like to do when I create a new project is just git in it. So now I have an initialized empty git project, and everything I start doing is going to show up in git. And uh, after that, I'm going to do an npm in it. Yes. Uh, so it creates a default package JSON file for me. Uh, with a description and stuff like that. So, and I will be adding my first dependency to this project, which is Nightwatch, obviously. Um, so save dev. What this will do, will it, it will create a um, node modules folder and it will add Nightwatch to my dev dependencies. Now what I can do is change my test script uh, to be Nightwatch. So now, if I run npm test, Nightwatch is going to rightly complain, uh, saying that I don't have a nightwatch.json or a nightwatch.conf.js configuration file defined in the current folder. So what I'm going to do is add a nightwatch.conf.js file, and I'm going to try running npm test again. If I run npm test again, it complains rightfully because my configuration file doesn't contain anything. Uh, so it will link me to the documentation that explains how to make a basic configuration file. So what I'm going to do is just grab this and create an empty object, not an empty object, sorry. I'm going to export this object in my nightwatch.conf.js file, but this is a very bare metal configuration with just the basics necessary to get us up and running. So we're telling Nightwatch that all of our tests are going to be in the tests directory. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file inside tests. Um, let's call it first test.js. Uh, for the time being, this is going to stay empty. And when we run the Nightwatch command, Nightwatch is going to look into the tests folder for all the test files. Then we have a node called WebDriver. Now WebDriver is the motor, it's the engine, it's what's going to be powering our tests and Nightwatch uses the WebDriver protocol to talk to the browsers and tell browsers what to do. It says, uh, you know, open a new browser window, go to this URL, click on this. And uh, we need to instruct Nightwatch on how we intend to talk to the browser. In this example configuration, uh, we are telling Nightwatch that we want Nightwatch to manage the browser for us. And in order to do that, we need to give Nightwatch a path to the Chrome driver. Chrome driver is the driver for Chrome. 
and it's what uh, is able to talk to the Chrome browser. Now I'm going to solve this very easily by installing another module called Chrome Driver. And if I'm not mistaken, this module adds a Chrome Driver binary in this path that Nightwatch expects. So we'll be checking this in a moment. So it's finished installing. And yes, indeed, in node modules, bin, Chrome Driver, I have the binary that Nightwatch expected to find. If I were to try and run this from the command line, you can see that this is a binary. It has tons of options and it basically uh, allows you to run the Chrome driver so that you can send commands to the Chrome driver and tell it to do stuff. But for the time being, we don't have to worry about this. Nightwatch will take care of this for us. So all we have to do is tell Nightwatch where we've installed the Chrome driver and that's done. Uh, define a port. This is, I believe, the default port for Chrome driver. And then we want to create some test settings and each node inside the test settings property will be a different browser or could be a different browser. In this case, we only have a default browser, which is what Nightwatch will look for if we don't specify anything. Optionally, we could add more browsers like uh, Firefox and Safari, and these would all be different nodes inside this object. We're not going to worry about this for the time being. At the moment, we just want to get a basic test up and running. So we're telling Nightwatch, these are this uh, desired capabilities is a, is a term that you'll find often when you're working with WebDriver and it's the default syntax, well, default property name for the capabilities of a browser. So besides the browser name, which tells WebDriver which browser we actually want to use, you could use different objects like browser dimensions, browser user agent, and all tons of options you could define in here. Again, for the time being, default configuration is more than enough for us. So I'm going to save this file and I'm going to try running npm test again. So what just happened? We saw a browser open up, the test suite has ended. Looks like it didn't fail, but nothing happened. Nothing happened because our test is not doing anything. So what I want to do now is create a very basic test um, by just exporting something. Now what Nightwatch does is it looks for all the keys on the object you are exporting and each key will become a test suite, a test case, sorry. Um, each key will become a test case and the value of the, so I'm gonna create my first test case. And the value of this property will be a callback in which I receive the client property. Client or browser. Actually, I'm going to call it browser because you'll probably see that more often in the documentation. Now, the browser object is actually our entry point into the Nightwatch API. On browser, we will find all the commands, all the, um, all the things that will allow us to manipulate the browser itself. So if we, for instance, go back to the Nightwatch uh, JS API, uh, and here I'm on the Nightwatch JS homepage, you can see under API reference that there is a very long page with a lot of stuff that we can use. And uh, what I'm mostly interested in at the moment are commands and protocol, because commands are what will give us the possibility to actually manipulate the browser. So I'm going to do URL. Uh, I want to set a URL. So um, one very handy thing about this page is that it's all on one page so you can use command F in your browser just to look for things and what I'm interested in is setting a URL so I know what it is I just want to show you yeah or navigate to a new URL so what I can do is browser.url and send a URL so browser.url and I want the URL of Hacker News Yes. So we will navigate to this. And my test, um, what we want to do in my test is, do, 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 what could we do? We want to make sure that this title contains the text Hacker News. So I'm going to grab this uh, selector 
I'm not sure if you can see this. Let me increase the font actually. So what I'm doing is um, inspecting the page and I'm trying to figure out what the selector for this element is. So it looks like this element has a class name. If I search for this class name, it is unique. This is the only result I have. So this is the class name of this object. So I'm going to use a command called wait for element visible. And I will pass it in the class name I'm looking for. And once that's happened, so wait for element visible is a command that allows me to, like the command says, wait for an element to be visible. This is good when you want to check something on an element, you make sure that it's visible with you before you actually manipulate it. Um, there are a lot of commands with Nightwatch version 1 that will actually fail if an element is not visible or interactable. So if you try to click on something, for instance, and the element is not visible, your test will fail. Now, visible does not mean display block. It does not mean that it's uh, simply not hidden. What it means is it has to be not um, visible to a user. So WebDriver has a way, I'm not sure what, how it does this precisely, but if something covers an element, so if you have an element with display block and it's on screen and you have a modal, for instance, a pop-up or something covering that element, in CSS terms, the underlying element will still be visible. In jQuery terms, that element will still be visible. But in WebDriver, Nightwatch, slash end-to-end -end testing terms, it will not be visible. It will only be visible if it is actually visible to the user and the user can interact with it. So now that we know that that title element is visible, what I want to do is get is check the text, the text of this element. Now there are a few ways in which I could do this. Um, Node, for instance, has an assertion library. So I could use Node's assertion library and just grab the text of this element and check that the text of the element is what I expect it to be. But Nightwatch has built, has built in a lot of expectation and assertion API functionalities that will allow us to um, write tests with more ease and more simplicity if once you know how the API actually works. So if I go into the assert section, you'll see here um, contains text. So this is actually what we want to do. We want to assert that an element contains a specific text. So I'm going to copy this and go back to my code editor and add assert contains text. Here we will have .hn name and here we expect it to be hacker news. I'm going to run npm test again and what happens is it opens up Hacker News. It tests if the element HN name contains text Hacker News to assertions passed. We're good. Success. The test works. We have a green test. This is what we wanted. So now I can officially say this test thing is set up correctly. Um, what I want to do now is just add a git ignore file so I can ignore the stuff that I'm not interested in pushing to the repository. Default is node modules because these are things that you don't need in Git, but I'm also going to be ignoring tests output because this is something that Nightwatch generates and it's something I don't want to push to um, Git. The same goes for chromedriver.log. I will be ignoring all the log files. Not sure how that happened. So I can save this. Now I have all of my changes, a nice git ignore file, a nice clean nightwatch.conf.js file, package JSON, package lock JSON, and my first test case. First commit. Ta da! So I'll be pushing this to git soon. Please check it out. I'll leave a link to this in the description. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching. I really enjoyed making this video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, share it, tell your grandma, help out, show some love. I uh, leave any feedback you have or questions or doubts or anything at all, please reach out to me. I'd love to, have to talk to you and, and make this channel some kind of conversation rather than just me talking to the viewers. Um, so tune in soon for the next video. Thanks for watching.